Good afternoon, everyone. We are gathering to spend some time in prayer, spend some time in a place of worship. We're going to be praying specifically today for our nurses and our health care workers, mental health professionals as well, uh, that God will continue to cover them and strengthen them. Pastor Wayne and I are here, my wife Christina and Cleanne, we're here. We're here to give God intercession and call upon his name. If you know of a Healthcare worker, you can type in their name as we go into a place of worship. If you know of a mental health professional, maybe you, you're seeing a therapist now, you want to just type in their name and cover them in prayer today. We're going to care for those who care for us and ask God's blessings over us. Before we do that, let's go into a time of prayer, worship. Right where you are, you open up your hands and say, Lord, I'm coming into your presence with thanksgiving. I'm entering to your courts with praise. Will you tell the Lord hallelujah right now where you are? to say that word hallelujah or you say God bring your peace right now Lord we thank you that you're the God of peace you're the God of peace you're the God of peace Lord we declare that you are the God of peace and we exalt you today we exalt you today take a few moments right now and begin to lift up the name of Jesus lift him up and exalt him thank you Lord for being our hiding place thank you for being our refuge Thank you for being a very present help in trouble. Thank you, Lord. We lift up the glorious and righteous name of Jesus. We exalt you today. Sing with us as we worship his great name together. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, your 
presence is near. Oh, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. My 
Lord is just saying, come into my place of rest. For those of you who have been fighting on the front lines, our nurses, our doctors, all of our healthcare workers and professionals, he's just saying right now, come into my place of rest. I see him as the nurse and the doctor right now, and he's just coming to you and putting his hand on you, restoring your strength restoring your faith, restoring your heart. Lord, we declare, oh God, because you are with us, we have nothing to fear. We declare, oh God, because you are our hiding place, that we rest in you. And I just hear that word that my wife spoke about rest. The Lord says right now to every healthcare worker to open up your heart and your hand right now and receive the rest of the Lord, to receive the rest of the Lord. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that you are bringing us into a place of rest. Some of us need to turn off uh, our, our news programs and other uh, areas of entertainment and spend some time resting in the presence of the Lord. I know there's a lot to do, and I know there's tons to do for our health care workers and our mental health professionals, a lot of people to care for. The Lord says today, rest. Come to me and rest in my presence. Come to me and rest in my presence. So right now, I have my wife just sing over you and receive the rest 
receive the rest of the Lord. Receive the rest of the Lord. Yes, God, right now we declare peace. We declare peace, oh God, over every home. I just even see rooms where some of you are sleeping, and Lord would say there's a warfare going on in your room where uh, there's peace trying to enter in, but there's confusion and worry and anxiety standing at the door trying to keep the peace out. And this is not a passive peace, but it's an active peace, an active peace. A forceful peace, if I can even say, coming into your room now, resting, <laughs> resting upon you, resting upon you. So we speak peace now. We speak peace now in Jesus' name. Peace, peace, peace. Peace in Jesus' name. You know, Pastor Wayne, my cousins are nurses out in California, and they've been... Uh, uh, texting me and we had a chance to zoom call the other day and just all of the worry and the anxiety and the struggles that patients that they're seeing and uh, people in New York and the struggles will you just pray for our nurses and and those that are seeing some horrific things just pray that God would begin to pour into them and pray that God would surround them thank you pastor David I have 
loved ones also that are in the nursing profession, so I'll be glad to pray. Father, we just thank you today and praise you for the opportunity that we've gathered together and have this privilege to lift up our nurses, God, all across this land of ours. And Father, you know the abilities and the talents and the strength that you've placed within them. But God, they need extra strength. They need extra courage. They need extra faith. They need just that extra, God, and with the extra that they're already giving. And I just pray, Father God, that you'll strengthen them and flow forth from them, God. Let life flow forth. Let strength flow forth. Let comfort flow forth. Let energy flow forth. Let wisdom and knowledge, Lord, give them discernment and discretion to make right decisions. And protect our nurses, Father God. Protect them. Watch over them. Lord, may they walk forth into their places of responsibility without fear. Father, I thank you that those nurses that are in the emergency ward, those that are in the hospitals, Father God, those that are in the nursing homes, those that go into the homes as health care provision, those, Father God, that are in hospice, I just thank you, God, that you're ministering your strength to them and compassion to them. Father, touch their families, Lord, when they come home from work. Watch over their families, God, in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father God. No plague, God, would attach itself to these nurses in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for you to give them wisdom on all the different precautions they need to take. But more than that, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over and around and in and through them in Jesus' name. We claim Psalms 91 over them today, Father God. And we just thank you, Father, that they can go forth with divine inoculation Father God, with divine protection and with a divine mandate, God, to minister health and healing by your grace and by your strength in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord, we declare right? Isaiah 54 upon them that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Speak right to that nurse, that healthcare worker, the doctor who has a family at home. I say no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That nurse from this church that is struggling in the chat room, I just declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every time that rises against you, you shall condemn. The accusation of the evil one will try to come against you and will try to speak lies against you. Right now we proclaim in Jesus' name that the great one lives inside you. The great one is your hiding place. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous they run right into that place. Hallelujah. And they are safe. Right now, Lord, we run. Hallelujah. We run into the safety of Jesus. We run into the strong tower of Jesus for you make darkness tremble. You make diseases go away. You heal every disease. As you said, by your wounds, we are already healed. So Lord, I, I agree with Pastor Wayne and I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over every illness and every disease right now. And we say blood cover us. Blood of Jesus cover us. Blood of Jesus cover our homes, cover our spouses, cover our loved ones. Oh God, I pray, oh God, for the nurses all the way from California to New York City. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, cover each one. Oh Lord, I thank you that your blood has no limits. I thank you that your blood has no limits, that your power has no limits. Oh God, I thank you for the scripture that says the hand, the arm of the Lord is not too short. You can reach. You can reach to wherever is needed. So Lord, we pray, oh God, for our friends in India. We pray for our friends, oh God, all over the world. And Lord, we say, oh God, reach. Hallelujah. Reach, oh Lord. Lord, reach into these areas and bring peace. Reach into these areas and bring your healing strength. Oh, Lord, reach into these areas and bring a fresh, hallelujah, a fresh wind of strength, of courage. Oh, God, a fresh wind, oh, God, right now in the name of Jesus. For in the book of Romans chapter 16, it says the God of peace will crush Satan under his feet. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I thank you that you are the God of yeah. peace. I thank you that you are the prince of peace, yeah. that you have peace yeah. in your right hand, in your left hand, that you have peace to deliver. Oh God, send your peace now. Send your peace now. If you have a name of a nurse, would you just type it into the chat room, a healthcare worker, just type it into the chat room and let's continue to pray for God's peace. Hallelujah.
Father, we are acknowledging that you are the Prince of Peace. We're acknowledging that you are the King of Kings and that you are the Lord of Lords. And Father, where that anxiety would try to come and cause worry and fear, we bind it in the name of Jesus. And we say, be gone, be removed in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask for a baptism of peace, Father God, a baptism of rest, a baptism of confidence, God, in Jesus' name that would fill our healthcare professionals in the name of Jesus. We believe, Father God, as Pastor David said, your word boldly proclaims no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And I thank you, God, that you minister courage and strength and the glory of the Lord, Father God, shall be upon every individual in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to encourage those of you that are healthcare professionals. When anxiety comes, you say, in Jesus' name, I don't bow to anxiety. Heart, I don't let you palpitate with anxiety. Put yourself in a presence as you wait on God and as you pray and let the peace of God fill your heart. Let the peace of God strengthen you. It comes and flows from the innermost part of your being. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and God will give you joy unspeakable and that joy will be your strength so that you can do what God's called you to do, healthcare professionals and all of us as believers. God ministers to every one of us today in Jesus' name.
Yes, God, we declare, oh God, you are a shelter like no other. And Lord, we thank you that you have power to make the darkness tremble. Lord, I thank you, oh God, that you sit high, oh God. But Lord, you come down low, Father, to our hearts and to our lives. I was just reading in the chat room of how Celise mentioned she had just been leaving a, a patient's home. And right when she got in the car, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit just blew into her heart, strengthening her heart, her mind. Right now, will you just receive a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in your homes, fresh wind of the Holy Spirit as you're driving around, fresh wind of his presence, and just say, peace, be still right now in your homes. Peace, be still in your hearts. Peace, be still still, and even in your words and your confessions. Lord, I thank you that you're giving us peace in our confessions, oh God. You're putting peace in our mouths that we would speak peace now, that we would speak peace. I want to shift us to our therapists and our mental health professionals, and, and, and all of us have those that we're talking to, those that we speak to, those who are caring for us to make sure we uh, have, have peace in our minds. And we're having a, a seminar on Friday night. Can we pray uh, for our mental health professionals and just ask God, maybe there's someone that you are reaching out to that's been a help to you. If you can imagine the increase of those that just need someone to talk to, can we just begin to cover them now in Jesus? Jesus name that God would give them discernment that God would give them hope that God would give them peace they're dealing with this crisis in their own way can we just begin to pray and speak peace over those that are providing uh, a therapy and different uh, those areas of care upon us pastor Wayne would you just lead us in this time of prayer father I just thank you today that you minister health and healing and strength father to all these health care professionals that minister to the soul of man in Jesus name God strengthen them encourage them bless them thank you for the mind of Christ that would operate in them Lord God that they would know what to say and how to say it and I thank you father God that they have discernment to say the words of comfort and encouragement that need to be set in Jesus name father I believe Lord, that you would impart supernatural wisdom, supernatural insight, God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that you would minister through them love and gentleness, goodness. You would minister through them peace. You would minister through them, Father God, strength. You would minister through them the ability, Father God, to encourage in Jesus' name. Let an anointing rest upon them, God, in Jesus' name. And Father, I believe that you will enable them to have a fresh word, God, a fresh word for every individual that they deal 
with, a word that will speak to the very core of the circumstance and situation, a word that will give faith, that will enable that individual to walk forth from that appointment, encourage God, enlightened, strengthened, able to face the task that is at hand. And I thank you, Father God, for those that are equipped to bind the strongholds of the enemy, God, in the name of Jesus. We believe, Father God, that you equip individuals to bind the strongholds of the enemy of anxiety and worry and fear and darkness, and that you, Father God, would release the fruits of the Spirit. You, God, would release the gifts of the Spirit. You, God, would relieve, release hope. <laughs> Let your hope be in those appointments, God. Let your encouragement be in those appointments. Let a lightness, Father, come upon individuals in those appointments, God. They may come in heavy, but God, they'll leave with joy. They'll leave with strength because you equip these healthcare professionals, God, with abilities that are supernatural in Jesus' name. Yeah, God, I just pray, oh, Lord, that there would be a, a, a new anointing, oh, God, yes. during this season of COVID. Oh, Lord, God, a new anointing, oh, God, a new strength to come upon each uh, therapist and each mental health counselor, oh, Lord, who has had to increase their amount of patience and increase their amount of workload. Lord, I just pray that you'd give them a new strength, a new strength, oh, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, they function on a certain type of strength prior to this pandemic, but now that they're in it, Lord, I thank you, oh, God, for a deposit of strength. Oh yes. God, for they are in this season for such a time as this. Oh God, and as you spoke to Esther, oh God, Lord, I speak to these uh, individuals, oh God, I say, rise up, for you were created for this time. Do not shrink back, for God is giving you new strength. He's giving you new wisdom, a deeper understanding of what to say, a deeper understanding of how to pray. He's going to give you words to say, a prophetic flow even for your patience, yes. for those that you are counseling, for those that are struggling to the vulnerable who are struggling with deep mental illnesses that can't comprehend the situation. Oh, God, I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for strength. I thank you, oh, God, that you are giving them, oh, God, just what they need during this season. Lord, we speak peace. We speak peace over them now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just want to echo that. I just feel to pray for those who are suffering from compassion fatigue and depression is starting to sink in. Those of you that I can see that are just feeling like you're pouring and pouring and pouring and having a really hard time feeling filled back up. And so, Lord, right now, I just push back that darkness of fatigue, of compassion fatigue, of depression, Lord. God, we just say there is no place for that. There is no place for that. And so, Lord, I just put a hedge of protection around all of our health care and mental health professionals, Lord, right now, that you would protect them from this compassion fatigue, from depression, from getting in. Lord, that instead they would be filled with your light. And Lord, that just by not striving to fill themselves up at all, they would just feel you. They would just feel you continuing to pour in and pour in after every meeting with someone that something is sucked out, Lord, that you would just pour it right back in immediately, Lord, immediately with no delay, that they would feel that strength that was prayed for already, that strength to rise up, that they would feel their heart in, um, lightened, Lord, that they would be a lightness of heart. And God, I said this earlier, but I just pray for a sound mind, Lord. I pray for a sound mind, a sound mind. I pray for thoughts to be clear. I pray for the noise to be lessened. Lord, I pray for the, that anxiety and the depression, Lord, to alleviate. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for a sound mind, a sound mind. Lord, I pray that things would just slow just a little. Things would slow a little in their mind and in their heart, Lord. A sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Father, your hand is not shortened. Father, you're reaching out to touch multitudes. 
And I thank you, Father God, through these professionals, you're touching multitudes, Lord God. And Father, I thank you for all the pastors, Lord God, that are ministering comfort and strength and encouragement, Lord God, that are helping their flock, Lord God, chart the course that they need to chart during this time in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to supernaturally equip those pastors, Lord God, to minister to the mental stability, the economic stability, to minister to the health stability, the family stability, Lord God, of their members in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I praise you that we stand in the gap and hold up the hedge, God, for these individuals, Lord God, that minister so powerfully in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak words of encouragement, words of enlightenment, words of glory upon them, in them, around them, and through them. Help them to press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, that they don't slack. They don't turn back, but God, they keep pressing forward, pressing forward with an anointing and with an equipping that supernatural God, supernatural insight and supernatural ability to help their congregation during these times in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're almost done here with this time of prayer. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for our health care workers, continue to pray for our mental health professionals, and continue to guard over them, plead the blood of Jesus over them. Those of you who are watching, maybe you're in that field, know that your church is praying for you. Know that your church is covering you. And if you need prayer, reach out to the pastoral staff. Send us an email. Let us know if you need prayer. Let us know if you need someone to cover you in prayer. We're here to pray for you. Pastor Wayne, you had mentioned a, a, a verse in a, a scripture that you felt the Lord wanted you to share. Why don't you share that and, and pray for us today? Thank you, Pastor David. I know that many of us have heard the scripture where it says where iniquity abounds, grace abounds much more. And I just want to encourage all of you today to look for the grace abounding. Because we are hearing so many different things that are filling us with fear or trying to fill us with fear or doubt or unbelief or get us to be double-minded. I just want you to know that God's on his throne because he boldly proclaims that he is for us. And if he is for us, who can be against us? So let's look for the grace and let's look for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If you examine history, you will see that God has always demonstrated great moves of his spirit after very destructive times. After World War II, God raised up a man and many others like Billy Graham who ministered the gospel powerfully and effectively. He raised up organizations like Women's Aglow and Full Gospel Businessmen. After, after and during the Vietnam War, there was a move of the Spirit of God that began to be called the Charismatic Movement and the Jesus People Movement. And songs were being written like they had never been written before. And down through these last decades, God has been raising up individuals. And let's believe that out of all this time of prayer, all this time of seeking God, grace will abound much more. And let's look for the grace abounding. Look for God speaking to your heart. What can you, what can I do? What can we do to bring words of life and hope and encouragement? What can we do by an anointing of the Holy Spirit? And that's what encourages me. He promised, God did, to pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. Let's look for that outpouring of his spirit in our life, in our community, in our neighborhood, in our nation. And that's what I'm excited about, Pastor David. Amen. A Amen. move of God's grace. Hallelujah. Open up your hands, each, each one. We're going to close with a song. I want you to receive this song, and I'm going to give us a blessing to close out our time of prayer. It is well. It is well with our soul. When peace like a
God bless each of you. Have an amazing, amazing day. Hope to see you tomorrow on midday. And remember, Friday night at 7, we're having our seminar with our mental health professionals. God bless you. Have an amazing, amazing Wednesday.